what's going on everybody today we're going to be going over a tutorial on how to get the Summoner's War Rune Optimizer working on your Mac I know the video uh, doesn't really help out too much on Mac and I made a quick contribution into the comment section of how to get it running but I did miss a step the, the biggest part of how to get it running is installing Python and getting that running on your Mac so I figured I would just go ahead and instead of trying to amend it and adding all these steps into somebody else's comment section, I'll just go ahead and make my own video. This is what the Rune Optimizer looks like. If you're not familiar with it, I don't know how you wound up here. It's an awesome tool. It helps you create builds for all kinds of monsters and figure out what to do with them, uh, you know, based on what you want out of them. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this. The first thing you're going to want to do is download Python. Python is what lets you run the the uh, Summoner's War proxy that, that gathers the information of your runes and monsters and whatnot. So just go ahead and go to this address here. The links will be in the description. And grab the latest Python 3 release or Python 2. It doesn't actually matter. I just prefer Python 3 because I, I like the latest and greatest. So after that, you're going to want to go to terminal. So you're going to want to open up terminal. You can go ahead and type up here into your search bar and bring open terminal like this. Uh, I don't like opening terminal, it shows my name and, and things like that, IP address and whatnot. But anyway, what you are going to want to do, let me go ahead and quit out of this. What you're going to want to do is copy this line here. It will be in the description, just like always. And right click, copy, and paste this into your terminal window. Okay? And it's going to download a couple of things, you know, the packages that you need. I shouldn't pop back any errors. Um, my buddy that I was running through this with, he actually didn't need this DPKT Yapsy part. So if this doesn't work properly for some reason, just try it with the Pi Crypto and see what happens. Um, I don't know why there seems to be some discrepancies in it and why, you know, why it doesn't always work the, the right way. I don't know. It may be a difference between which, which Python you install. I'm not really sure. After you get that done, you're going to want to go to this link right here. <laughs> Um, anyway, you're going to want to pop it open, as always, in the description. You're going to want to come down here, download, I prefer the source code tar.gg, uh, but you can download the source code zip now. Before, the source code zip still had all the, the Windows files in it, and so it wasn't very good. You cannot download the RAR. If you're on a Mac, the RAR will not work. It only has Windows files. So you're going to want to download this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do the tar.gz real quick. You know, pop it open. See, I use this archive utility. You can download it from the Mac App Store. Uh, I use, it's actually called Extractor is the name of the app. It's a free app from the Mac App Store. Uh, as you saw, it has a green folder with a zipper on it. Um, and like I said, the regular zip should work, which you won't need this tool, but I mean, come on. This is a little bit more fun than just a regular zip file. So anyway, after you get this downloaded, as you can see, I've got a couple of them. I ran through this last night. Um, you're going to want this right here, this swproxy.py. Um, py being py, python source, whatever. It's a python file. Um, you're going to want to right click on it or control click on it and go to open with. Okay, see it has Xcode as my default and all of this stuff. You don't want any of that. You're going to want to go to apps, I mean other, applications, and then I think because this is something that's normally kept on your, your Mac pre-installed, it should be under utilities, and then terminal. Uh, it was just here. Okay, there you go, terminal. Open with that. It's going to pop open a window and it should look something like this now. So anyway, we've got this file here. Um, 
or this window here, this is exactly what it looks like um, when you pop it open in terminal. What you're going to want are these numbers that it lists right here. The running proxy server at, and that'll give you an IP address, uh, on port 8080. It should always be 8080. Um, I think that's what I saw in the notes and all of my friends that are using it, it's always 8080. Anyway, these numbers are the exact same. So what you're going to want to do from here is take these numbers that it gives you and go to your phone, okay? Um, I'm using an Android, so I'm going to run through the steps on there, but it's basically all the same steps on an iPhone or iPad or whatever you're using, tablet. It's all basically exactly the same. Um, so once you're on your phone, go to your multitasker close out summoner's war you don't want it running right now because later on you're gonna need to open it up fresh to gather the data go to uh, go to your your settings app find Wi-Fi which is usually just on the first tab go to uh, the network settings whatever your network is like uh, on Android you you long press on your network and then pop it up. it'll pop up in a little menu and you click on the advanced settings scroll down just a little bit and it'll show um, like a, a proxy proxy settings it'll say none you're going to want to click on that change it to manual and then enter as the address you're going to want to enter the the numbers that it gives you right here as the address and then on port uh, just type in 8080 and it should work just fine so now save or whatever you have to do, just close out of that. Go ahead and open up Summoner's War again after you've got that closed out and wait for it to like download information or whatever. And now while this is while this is happening from your phone, you can go to your terminal window here and it'll pop open a bunch of things. You'll see a bunch of like gathering info, getting this, getting this. You're gonna be waiting for it to say something about um like runes and monster information. Uh runes and monster data maybe. I don't remember exactly what it says, but it's something like that. After that one pops up, you can actually close out of somewhere where you don't have to wait for it to finish everything. So you can go ahead and close out of that. Go to your settings, you can uh, do the same thing, long press on it, go to your advanced settings for your network. Uh, go back to proxy settings and change it from manual back to none and hit save and you're actually done you're done with the uh, the proxy you've got all the information you know, downloaded to your computer so you can close out of that set your phone down to the side you don't need it anymore what you're going to want to do after this this is where things start to get a little a little bit slightly more tricky you're going to want to come here i've already got all these windows open because i was running through it last night um what I do, and don't judge me, because my desktop is really cluttered. I open like this. I know not everybody has their hard drive sitting here for some reason. Um, I mean, that's fine. You, you don't have to. But it's it's one of the best things to do. Uh, you know, all Windows basically has the same thing. Anyway, that's just the easiest way to search for things. But if you don't have that, you can hit Shift, Command, F when you're in Finder. And you're in Finder here, and now you're in an All My Files tab. Okay, so what you're going to want to do from here is do a search for dot JSON JSON. Okay, uh, you can leave it right here, and this is fine. As you can see, mine, my most recent one has popped up. Um, sometimes you may need to go to this Mac and type in your JSON and sort by date last opened or date modified. Um, it, it, I've seen both on here. I don't know why it seems to change sometimes from window to window. To window. But anyway, you're going to want to do this. Pop it open. Okay. And now hit Command A. Command C. And now you have all of the information in this window. All of this crazy shit. You've got all of it um, selected, highlighted and now copied to your clipboard. So now you come back here, go back to your browser, and go back to this swruns.all.my. See, I've already got my information posted in here. Well, this is actually my fiance's, but go to this export slash import tab. Uh, go ahead and clear all that out. And control V, or just 
right click, uh, control click, however you want to do it, and paste that information in here. Now you're going to want to click on import, and I'm not going to do this because it already has all my fiance's data in here. But anyway, after that, it'll take you, I think it takes you straight to the notes tab for some reason. Kind of gives you a little run through on how to use all this or what all these features are, but I'm gonna do a quick little run through right now. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go to your optimizer tab. It looks just like this. You know, got a few a few windows in here that I'll describe real quick. Um, pick a monster. Let's go ahead and do her Lucian, just for fun. Uh, set them up on, let's do Fatal. Fatal, and I don't usually worry about the offsets unless you have a specific person purpose for having them, like uh, on my Beast Monk, my Ritesh, um, do Violent Revenge almost no matter what. I, I really don't want a different offset, even if it'll give them better stats, I want that Revenge offset. So now now that you've got your sets set or sets chosen, you can choose no broken sets, but that's that's stupid. Don't do it. Um, I, I hate it more than anything. You, broken sets are not a bad thing. I've seen... Like, I've got multiple slot 1 swift runes with over 16 crit rate on them, plus like 11 attack, 11% uh, attack, and things like that. And, you know, even if I'm running a violent build, man, sometimes that slot 1 rune of a swift set really helps. So, you know, it's not going to be a complete set, therefore broken, um, and it definitely helps out sometimes. It, sometimes it's much better to have that than it is to have like a, like a blade set. Because that slot one rune with 18% crit rate is already better than a blade set, so why would you, you know, why would you go for that blade set unless you have runes that are that good of blade and you can get you know, some ridiculously high crit rate? But let's ignore that. I'm just gonna go to crit rate. I know it's not an ideal build for Lucian, but I'm just doing this to run through things. Um, use locked runes. Leave that off because what you can do is on your monsters here, you can choose like a, like Beth here. And scroll down and lock runes. So do that for all the monsters that you don't want to touch. Um, and then leave this unchecked. And it'll keep from pulling runes from that monster. Or those monsters. Use only 6 star runes. I don't worry about that. I don't have a lot of good 6 star runes. A lot of my best runes are, are 5 star. Um, my 6 star runes typically have just trash subs. I I don't have good luck with six star runes for some reason. You can choose use only five and six star runes. Usually, if you're at the point where you only want to use five and six star runes, that's probably what you have in your inventory anyway, so I wouldn't worry about choosing it. Uh, use only runes of a level of whatever. It's kind of a stupid option. I don't really know why they gave it to you. I mean, powering up runes is not that hard. Uh, if you have a specific rune that you absolutely want to use, you can type in the number here and separate them by commas. If you have runes that you absolutely do not want to use, you can do the same thing. Type them in right here, separate them by a comma. Like, I've had one that it kept popping up a rune, and let's just say that it was number like 335. I think that's actually what it was. It did give me the best, the best, uh, the best stats for what I wanted exactly, but I didn't like the rune. So I, I sacrificed a little bit of health and uh, got, got better, uh, better speed and accuracy and stuff. Just sacrificed a little bit of help, so health. So you can go ahead and type that in right here. Uh, I'm not going to in this case, so focus. Um, since I chose slot 4 to be a crit rate, I'm going to choose crit damage here. And I like to only do one focus stat at a time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and preset a filter for crit rate above 85 and see what happens. She may not have runes that already have that. Of course, go to your plus 15 stats. I'll do the same thing here. And now that you've got all of this, all of this information typed in and you have a focus set, go ahead and choose go from here. And I will run through this. Uh, it doesn't take too terribly long. And now from here, you can sort by all of this stuff, all of these options, uh, sort by sets. I haven't really done that. Uh, I don't think it typically matters. Uh, it's something that's kind of stupid to do. I mean, I don't see why you would want to sort that way. You really are focusing on stats. So you can sort by health. You know, I can get her up to 15 and a half thousand. Sort by attack, get her up to almost 2,500 attack. 
which isn't bad. Uh, defense, you're not really going to want to sort by that. Speed is pretty important, but as you can see with her runes that she has right now, speed is kind of meh. Uh, crit rate, you can sort, and you can you can tell it to not go over a certain crit rate like this. This actually has stuff cleared out of it. It's normally like uh, like has crit rate set to not go over 120. Same for accuracy and resistance, I believe. But you can. You can filter things out like that. And like I said, this is showing only things that are over 85% crit rate. So if I go the other way, ascending, it's only 85% crit rate or higher. Definitely, I, I would sort by crit damage in this case, because you already have the really high crit rate, and see what happens from there. And let's see, you've got your, your 80s here. And if I sort by attack now, it's going to drop my crit damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do is filtered by above 80% crit damage and now sorted by attack everything is going to be above 80. It's just kind of useful to help narrow down what builds really are the best and you can just keep applying filters until you find something that you really like. So anyway that's basically how the rune optimizer works you know it's not too terribly hard to set up uh, it did take me a long time it took me a long time to get it set up for my my buddy that uses Mac uh, trying to get Python set up is by far the hardest part, but I think I've got it narrowed down pretty well. So that's it for how to use the Rune Optimizer. If you have any questions or anything, go ahead and po uh, post them in the comment section. I will get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, I'm constantly on YouTube. I'll I'll answer back as soon as I can. Uh, it may take me a little while to find an exact answer for you, but I think in most cases I'll probably have it already, and it won't be too difficult to get get back to you. So, there you go, guys. Hey, guys, what's going on? Don't forget to check out my guild, Guiltless, part of Guilty Inc. We have two guilds in our family right now. We have Guiltless and Guilty Pleasure, being one word. Uh, feel free to add us online to ask us any questions you would like. You can see the names right here. There are Rock on ACDC, being me, Dirty Cotton, our leader, and Codebreaker21, our other vice. So any questions you might have, if you're thinking about joining the guild, if you're looking for a new guild, uh, just want some advice, just want a Summoner's War uh, line group to be a part of, go ahead and hit us up.